Hi, this is Kate from Isalicious Designs. Today, I thought I'd show you how to make my 3D Amagurumi or Lumagurumi um, Very Hungry Caterpillar. Now, I've made it a very short one. You can obviously make as many of these as you like. You can bend them up so that it's like this um, and make it as long or as short as you like. Um, I guess the main thing is learning how to attach them all together making the head, the eyes, the nose, the uh, antenna here. So we'll get started. Now, things that you're going to need. I use three different kinds of green. I use the dark green, the opaque dark green, the opaque um, normal green, and the neon green, all from Rainbow Loom. I also used red opaque from Rainbow Loom and yellow opaque. And then I use these are actually the blue rainbow loom jelly navy. I had thought I was picking out the um, opaque navy, but the jelly navy works just as well. So that's what I used. Now I have to say I am pre-prepared, so we don't take hours doing this tutorial. I have made a bunch of these and I'll show you how to make one and then you can make as many as you need to make him as long as you need and uh, we will go from there. So I will make one of these with you, I'll make the head, the eyes, the nose and the antenna with you and we'll put it all together. So the things you're going to need other than the colours, um, a stitch marker, um, now, I should mention, this is a, a stitch holder that I got, which was a, a knitting stitch holder, and it was to hold the knitting stitches and whatnot, and I've actually found it really good for when I'm making um, things exactly like this, where I just want to hold them on my... my uh, holding hook but my holding hook isn't going to be big enough really so this I can hold arms and legs and body attachments and all sorts of things on this and it just pops open like that so I've been using this quite a lot as a holding hook for when I'm doing armagurumi so um, stitch marker that's quite important if you don't have these little stitch markers you can actually just use an s clip or a c clip something like that works very well um, it is a loomless, a hook only design, but I do use a loom to do the magic ring. Now you don't have to. If you're uh, confident enough to use just your hook to do the magic ring, that's fantastic. I use just my hook to do the magic ring. But for me to show new people how to do it, I find using the loom, a peg on the loom, is quite a, a good way. So we will get started and we will use the loom to do this. And uh, if you know how to do it on your hook, you don't need to, to be worried about this. You're going to take a single band and we're going to wrap that single band once and twice around that one peg. Okay, so you end up with three little loops. And this is going to be a magic ring of six. Now, I should say, if you haven't watched my beginner's guide to Lumagurumi video, please do so. Because otherwise this is going to sound like utter gibberish to you. OK, and you'll see that there at the top right corner is a little I for information on this video. If you click that, the link to the beginner's guide to Lumigurumi, I will put that there for you. OK, so taking your single band, your first single band out of these six, you're going to push your hook through the band on your peg and grab that little band and pull it through. And you're going to reclaim so you have it on your on your hook like this. You're going to take the side closest to you up and over and you've tied a little slip knot and you're going to budge that around. Push your hook back through and drag your second band through just like you did the first one. There it is sitting here and you're going to do your little slip knot on that one. So you've now got two little slip knots sitting on your peg, on your hook here. You're going to join them by taking the first one that you did up and over and you've kind of knotted it and budge around and let's do that for the third one okay make our little slip knot and join move around make a little slip knot and join move around make a little slip knot and join move it around make a little slip knot and join and take it off. Now that was six little bands to make a magic ring of six. You don't need your loom, we'll move that out the way now. So counting these, you've got one, two, three, four, five. 
Number six is on your hook. You're going to push your hook through that first stitch and we're going to do what's called an increase. So we're going to do two single crochets in each of these single stitches. So we're expanding this from six stitches around to 12 stitches. So let's grab our first band and pull it through and reclaim. You're going to take the side closest to you up and over. So you've done your little slip knot and then you're going to join it to the loop that you've already got on your hook like that and this is our first stitch so we're going to put our stitch marker right here so we know where we're at we're going to go back through that first stitch and do another single crochet so we have two single crochets in that first stitch and then we're going to go to this second stitch here push your hook through and you're going to do a single crochet and then you're going to push back through that second stitch and do a second single crochet. All right, like that. Here's our third stitch. Again, you're going to do two single crochets in that same stitch, which we call an increase. Here we go again. Now I'm going to be working in what's called continuous rounds for this. I do that in most of my projects. There's two, oops, let's do that again. The nice thing is if you if you do drop a stitch, it doesn't really matter because they're little slip knots. So you can just pick it up and re-loop it. Right in this fifth stitch, we'll do two in here. Here's our sixth stitch, and let's do our two in here. Oops, let's rehook these in. There we go. So we now have 12 stitches. If we count, count the little teardrops, the first one with our stitch marker through it. One, two, three, four, five. 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, and number 12 is on our hook. Okay, we're going to push through our first stitch again and do a single crochet and move our stitch marker like so. So now we've done our round of increases all the way, we're going to do the next round as a single crochet followed by an increase. So that was our single crochet that we've already done. So in this second stitch we'll do our increase, which is two single crochets in that second stitch. Now we'll do our single crochet in the third stitch and an increase in the fourth. single crochet and an increase and that's the pattern we do for this entire round one of the things that I've noticed um, Somebody was asking me about the uh, the hole size that you get in your work and using a smaller hook. I use a 2.75 when I'm doing Lumigurumi because I feel that it doesn't take as much room putting my finger and the hook through the band and you want to not stretch the band. So as much as possible you want the band to be uh, unstretched so you take it and you don't stretch it you just hold it I, and I'm not stretching it here you pull it through and loop it so I haven't stretched that band at all but if I was to stretch it it would go completely out of shape and I think that's what's giving some people the larger holes between their work um, if you if you were using a larger hook you've obviously got to put a larger hook and your finger through and I think that leads to stretching the band a little bit more. That being said, 
most bands, especially Rainbow Loom ones, will contract back, they relax. So give them a little time, a day or an hour or so, and they will relax back. We're back to the beginning again. Here's our first stitch here with our stitch marker on. We're going to push our hook through. And this is what I'm talking about, about this being a continuous round. We just go from the last stitch through. It's like a spiral, okay? If we were actually going to do separate rounds, you would do a slip stitch here and join this round together. And then you start on the new round. So there's a big difference. We're going to now do three rounds of single crochet. So I'm putting three bands here to equal each. One is equal to one round. I'm going to take the first one. So I know I have two rounds left. I'm going to move my stitch marker and I'm going to continue around in single crochets and I have to do three rounds of this. So here we go. So this is our first round of single crochet. This is my last stitch here. So we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, and eighteen is on our hook. Push your hook through that first stitch and grab one from here. So this is our second round of single crochet. Again, you're going to need 18 bands. So let's go around again. And you should still have 18 stitches. There's been no increasing or decreasing. This is my last stitch. Now I'm back at my beginning. Push my hook through. And I'm going to take it from this pile here. Move my stitch marker, which I forgot to do last time. There we go. And around we go again.
and back to the beginning I'm going to push my hook through that first stitch and do a single crochet and move my stitch marker all right so now what we're going to do is start our decrease okay and what we're going to do is a single crochet followed by a decrease and a single crochet followed by a decrease so that was our single crochet so we need to do a decrease which means you're going to go into the second stitch from the front and the third stitch from the front all right now this does stretch your band a little bit so try and be a bit careful pull it through the first one and then pull it through the second and even it up and join I do try not to stretch it too much I'm very conscious of the fact that this is one spot that I do stretch the bands but uh, you really can't be helped and they do relax so again put it through the first one and then stretch that out straighten it up and we do our decrease Let's do another one. For those that don't know, Cheryl Spinelli is a very dear friend of mine and uh, she and I have opened a group on Facebook that is specifically for um, Lumigurumi as we call it and um, you, please feel free to join us. We're just um, a group of people who are, are doing this um, form of looming and sharing tips and tricks and patterns where we get ideas from um, the crochet patterns that we've been using and, and all that sort of jazz um, it's called Lumigurumi forward slash Amagurumi with loom bands you'll find us on Facebook and we'd love to have you there to, to chat with us this is my last decrease and we will go through on first stitch and do a single crochet and move our stitch marker whoops go through our first stitch and drop everything <laughs> there we go move my stitch marker to here all right so that is my part of my little segment of my caterpillar now as you can see I have all of these here we need to join them together okay we need to make sure that they're all joined together and I have two styles of caterpillar this is this is one style and I have made sure that these are closer together my second caterpillar which I will be doing a tutorial on I put this out last week um, is joined a little differently so as you can see they're joined slightly differently okay this one is a lot looser um, uh, more like a, I suppose, a rope, and this one is more close together. So, for this style of joining together, what we're going to do, I'm going to take these off here, and I'm going to make a pattern of it. So, I'm going to start with a dark green because I've got three of the darker greens. So, start with a dark green and take these off. I'm going to follow it by the opaque green and then the neon green. All right, so let's see. We have a dark green right here. Okay, you need to leave your stitch marker on. I'm going to just attach the stitch marker to another piece, another loop down the middle here. And the reason for doing that is because um, I don't want to get to get it in the way of the um, stuffing that I'm going to be using. Now we can finish this one up and attach it to this one. What we need to do though first is put a little bit of stuffing in. Now each of these will not call for much stuffing, you don't want them to be overstuffed. So just spread this open and put probably about a cotton wool ball size of your filling, your stuffing in like that. Okay and now for this first one what we're going to do is close this up all right, so we're using the dark green, and all we're doing is single um, is decreases. 
No single crochet, just decreases. So here's our first decrease. And you can actually take your stitch marker off because you're just decreasing all the way around. Go to the next stitch and try and get the stuffing so it doesn't get caught on your bands as you're doing this. As I just did. <laughs> mm. Okay, so we're just doing decreases. Push the stuffing down. Just do one more in here. Okay, so that is finished off. Now I haven't tied it off yet. I'm just going to leave it like that. I'm going to take the little loop that was my last one and as I grab, I'm going to put my stitch marker on here, on this one here, and again, loop it through a little stitch. As I grab my next one, all right, I'm going to push my hook through the center of the magic ring that I, that I made when I started this. And I'm going to grab the end through and pull that through. And this is how we're going to join them, all right? Now, if you're just doing it this way, you'll find that you'll end up as I did my first one, okay, where you just join it like this. What I'm going to do, okay, and I'm going to take this off, is going through, I'm going to find, um, it's almost going to be like 12 o'clock, 3 o'clock, 6 o'clock, and 9 o'clock. I'm going to find a couple of loops on my ball. So here is the first one, like that. Let's grab a couple of bands. And I'm going to do anchor bands. So I'm pulling one through here. I'm going to go through the same on the other side. So this is all going to help anchor. And then I'm going to go on the other side here. And it really doesn't matter too much where you put these. Um, you, know, you could just find one little loop here. here I think that might be a bit low I want to go in this one here I think here we are put our anchor band on that one there so you're going to have four little anchor bands plus the center band As I said, if you don't want to do this, if you want to just do the other style, that's fine. Push your hook through where the magic ring was. You're going to grab that centre band and pull it through. Keep it on your hook, okay? You're going to then, if you look down here, you can see that you've got these, these holes here, here, here. You're going to go through one of those, all right? And grab the two ends of one band, one anchor band, and pull through and then take the center band that is on your hook up and over now you're going to move around and again you're going to say okay where where can I be about here and grab the next anchor band and pull it through you're going to have two loops and up and over let's move around to the next one pull through up and over Here's our last one. I'll probably go through here. Grab the anchor band. That's the last anchor band. Pull it through. Up and over. And if you go back to the to where you started at the beginning here and push your hook through and take a single band, you can join these together. 
with a single band and a slip knot and pull it nice and tight. And so that has joined it a little bit closer, I think, than, than the other style of joining, which I use for my other caterpillar. So now we're going to stuff this one and close it. So again, about the size of a cotton wool ball. Maybe that's a bit too much. Push in, and as I said, as I mentioned at the beginning, you can do as many of these and make it as long as you want. That's completely up to you. All right, let's get some of the opaque green to close this up. Again, just decreases. Push your hook through. Make sure you try to leave the stuffing. There's our first decrease. that down oops All right, so here's my center band. I'm going to hang on to that, okay? I can even put my stitch mark on it so I don't lose it. I'm going to do the four little anchor bands around. Again, just pick where you want them to go. So I'll pick that as my first spot. Second spot. Third spot. And I'll do this one here as my fourth spot. I'm going to grab the neon green. Push my hook through the magic ring. I'm going to take the center band, take that off, pull it through. Now I'm going to put the stitch marker on this little loop here and attach that to here so it's out of the way. Okay, so I have my center band from the previous ball on my hook. Now I'm going to dig around and find my anchors. Okay. So there's one pair up and over. Move around. Again, I'm going through these little holes that I can see. I'm going to grab the next band, pull it through, up and over. Let's find the next one. There's looks like a good spot there. It's all and it's all just um you know, I, I can't say oh it's the third hole on the right next to the left one that's on the horizontal. You just have to sort of guesstimate. <laughs> there we go. Again, you've got these two last ones on your hook. Go through where you started. Single band. Pull through and tie a slip knot. Nice and tight. And now we're ready to do to stuff 
our third one. And we're going to do this until we've put all of these on. All right. So when we've done all of them, we'll catch back up and then we'll start with the face. So I've connected my last ball here. I'm going to stuff that. And then we'll close it off and we'll start with the head. So the same amount of stuffing that you've put in the others, about the about the amount that a cotton wool ball would have. Take your stitch marker off. And again, we're just doing decreases. Make sure I push the stuffing back down. Now for this one, I am going to tie off. There you go, pull that through. And you'll probably do one more. Oh no, we'll tie off here. I think I've got a hook full of stuffing there so I'm going to take a single band pull it through both and do a slip knot and tie off okay nice and tight so that is my little caterpillar's body all right now what we're going to work on is his head his eyes nose the antenna so we're going to start with red I'm going to again use my loom a peg on my loom to help me show you exactly if you don't need your loom, that's fantastic. A single red band, wrap it once and twice. And we're going to do six. So one, two, three, four, five, six. Slide your hook through and we'll do our magic ring. way. Even these around. Go through your first one. We'll do a single crochet and attach our stitch marker to that as our first stitch. Now we're doing an increase in each of these. Okay, So back through that first stitch again and let's do our second single crochet. So we have two single crochets in each of these stitches. So we're going for 12 in total so you'll in you'll have increased it from 6 to 12 This is my last one. We'll count these stitches just to make sure. We'll mute my computer just to make sure. <laughs> so the first one is where our stitch marker is. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, and number twelve is on our hook. 
go through your first stitch again with a single crochet oopsie get that stitch marker out of the way <laughs> there we go and put the stitch marker back now this round is going to be single crochet which we just did the first one followed by an increase and then a single crochet and an increase so we're doing an increase here in the second stitch and a single crochet And we want his head to be bigger than his, the segments of his body, so this will be a larger ball. Okay, so that's the end. So let's count 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, and 18 is on our hook. Now we're going to do two single crochets and an increase. So let's do our first single crochet in stitch number one. Move our stitch marker. Do a second single crochet. In number two stitch number two so that's single crochet single crochet and in stitch number three we'll do our increase so there's one two and now we do a single crochet and a single crochet and an increase So now we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty one, twenty two, twenty three, and twenty four is on our hook. We're now going to do 
some rounds of single crochet okay and we're going to do five rounds so one two three four five I'm putting five bands here each one indicates a round okay so I'm going to put my hook through that first stitch for the first round of the single crochet and take one from this pile so I know that I have four rounds left to do move my stitch marker and around we go doing single crochet there is no increase there is no decrease you should have 24 stitches by the end of all of these five rounds two take one from the little pile I have here and around we go again Go through the first stitch again, take one from this pile and move our stitch marker.
oops, let's catch these before too many unravel. Back through the first stitch, grab one from here. I've got one more round to do after this round. Move my stitch marker and around we go again. Oh. Letting things unst unstitch here, unravel. Okay, back through the first stitch. There's our last, this is our last round of single crochet. Move your stitch marker. Back to the beginning, I'm going to do a single crochet and move my stitch marker. Like so. So this is how his head is going to be 
formed, what we're going to do now is start our decreasing. And to start our decreasing, we're going to do the opposite of what we did with our increasing. We're going to do two single crochets and a decrease. So that was number one. Let's do another single crochet in the next stitch. And then a decrease. A single crochet. Another single crochet. And a decrease. And that's the pattern all the way until you get to your stitch marker again. Oops. back through our first one with a single crochet. So you have now reduced and actually we'll count that, that's our first one, so one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen and eighteen was on our hook so you have reduced that back down now to 18. We're going to do another reduction but first what I'd like to do is actually add the eyes and the nose and also the antenna. Now there's a couple of ways that we can do his eyes. You can do them like I've done here which is all with bands or you can use a googly eye. Now I bought a packet of mixed size and mixed coloured googly eyes um, quite a while ago probably about a year ago and I'm still plowing through them um, this one has a green background and it's about let me see it's about six millimeters in uh, in diameter okay so that's the size of that now if you're going to use one of these you don't need them to be adhesive you don't need them to be so on just get the plain old normal ones that have nothing on the back you're going to get a sharp knife you're going to get an adult to help you if you're a child. You're going to get a sharp knife or a sharp pair of scissors. And we're going to make two little lines down the back here. Now, please be very careful. I don't want to hear that anybody has cut their fingers off. You're going to scour two little lines down the back. Okay. Can you see those here? Let me see if I can pop my hook through. Like this. Now... See, I can put my hook through here. Now that's a very small hook. This is 2.75. I'm going to use a metal threader. I made one out of a twisty tie. I have a video on how you can make one. You can use floss to do this as well. It really doesn't matter. But I prefer the metal threader because it's a little bit um, tougher. You're going to take a yellow band, pop it through your threader, and you're going to thread it through this little slit that you made like that and this is how we thread a bead onto a googly eye all right so there's my googly eye on there now we're going to make a border around it of yellow because in the hungry caterpillar picture it's a green eye with a yellow border so we're going to do if you're going to be doing um, an eye like this we'll do a green magic ring with five and then you do an increase all the way around. And for this one, we're just doing a magic ring of, I think it's, uh, let's count here. 
one, two, three, four, five, six, yes, seven. Okay, so we'll do both ways so that you've got options. Grab your loom, make some space. I'm using, I'll do the googly eye one first, okay? So if I'm going to do the googly eye, I'm going to do his eye in a green. The magic ring will be in a green, so I'm using a dark ring for this one. Wrap it once and twice, and you will do five little bands into that. So here's our first band. Second band. Third, fourth, and fifth. Take that off your loom, spread these around so that they're even, and then in each of these, there's your first one, two, three, four, five is on your hook. You're going to take a yellow band and do two single crochets. So here's our first single crochet and our second. I'm not using a stitch marker because I can very clearly see where the beginning is. It's where the yellow starts. First single crochet and second. First second This is my last stitch here. I'll do two in this. Oops. One, two. Go through where you started in that first stitch, and we'll do a slip knot like so. You're now going to do another one. That's 12 o'clock. You're going to three, six, and nine. So go through this stitch here. And these are our anchor bands. There's one. Let's make sure that it stays there. There's one. Two. And do one more. So we have one on each side. So this is how we do the eye. You, you will be doing two. It does help to do two. So these are our little anchor bands like that. Okay, I do it with this side up usually because I think this side is messier. So I do it this side up. And you're going to approximate. So here is your nose, the um, magic ring, and this is where you'll be putting your nose. So you want your eyes to be either side, and they go quite close to each other. Okay, so they go above the nose, all right? So I'm thinking probably one here, and maybe the other one here. Again, it's going to be up to you. So pop your hook through, and we need to pull the band in, keep it on your hook. You're going to find another spot, probably down here. Pull your next anchor band through. Mine is busy trying to unravel. Don't connect them up just yet because, so keep them on the end of your hook. And the reason I say that is you might want to adjust where they are. Okay, so they might be sort of looking a bit protruding. So if I do, if I look at that, I can think to myself, oh, that's a bit protruding. I might want this band to come out and actually go in here. I don't want them to be hugely protruding. So approximate where you want this to be, all right? And then you can flip it over and just attach them to each other, one through the other like that. And 
to tie off just go through a couple of red bands far enough away that it's not going to be too loose and tie a slip knot make sure that you're able to undo that if you need to so there is one eye now as you can see it's I've done it if this is my magic ring it's probably a bit low but we can work with it we could move it up so that this one comes up to here and move it up and again it's a fiddle factor I appreciate that but it's trial and error undo these so again let's have a look if we want this one to maybe come up to here that will draw this up so there's one we can move this one to here and just move them around until you feel that it looks see there's the nose that's where the nose will be I think that looks a bit better so let's turn it over and just one over the other like that back to the beginning grab a couple of bands if you can <laughs> there we go pull through and tie a slip knot so does that look a bit higher it does that looks a little bit higher than this one and you're going to do another one and you'll place that here All right now if you're doing the googly eyes and you might choose to do that I'm going to do this one with googly eyes because I just think um, I have one with the band eyes so I'm going to do this one with the googly eyes so I'm just going to undo this Take this one off. So if you're doing the googly eyes, you've threaded your little one through here. We're going to make a magic ring with a yellow band. So wrap it once and twice. You're going to need seven bands. Pop your hook through and let's do our magic ring with seven bands Get rid of your loom, spread these out so that they're evenly spaced. Okay, I'm going to pop my hook through that first stitch, and with a yellow band, I'm going to do a slip knot, a slip stitch, tie it like that, nice and tight. Okay, now through this, and it doesn't really matter which side you do, I'm going to take the little eye that I have that single band through okay and I'm going to have them going both both ends of my loop on that hook but first I'm going to poke my hook through the center of my magic ring grab those two little loops and pull them back through and I want both of them not just one there we go now to keep this secure I'm going to drag that little tie off end band here through that as well okay and as I add my eyes, so there they go like that, get some of these bands out the way. I've got stuff all over the place, goodness gracious. <laughs> as I add them, again, I'm going to remember this is where my nose is and I want my eyes to be either side. So I'm going to, again, approximate where I want the first eye to be, maybe here. And I'm going to grab the two bands, okay, and that tie-off band, the little band that we used, the slip knot. And I'm going to pull them back through. But I definitely want the two bands to come through. Okay. 
So it's three little loops that I want to come through, like that, okay? So that's where the first one is. Now I'm going to go through a little red band here on the underside and then grab a tie-off band just to do a little slip knot. I'm not going to do it too tight to start with just to make sure that I have things in the right spot, okay? You see that almost could be too low. I almost need it to be over there a bit. Let's adjust. Come back here, I. <laughs> Maybe if it's here, I'll try here. So I'm going to take the two loops. You can do the two loops first and then the other one after. It doesn't matter. Where's that tie off? There it is. So I'm going to go back through where I was. I want them all to come through the same spot. There we go. Find a couple of red bands. Get my tie off band again. And pull through and do a slip knot. I think that is a little better. Let's do this second one. Try and get it in the same vicinity. So about here. Pull through, grab a couple of the red bands at the back, and a tie off band. Let's see how we did. So I think that's about right. For his nose, I just did a magic ring in green. Single band. Wrap once and twice, and I did one that had two, four, six. So two, four, five, and six. I'm doing it in the neon. You can do it in the dark green. It really doesn't matter. One. Oops. Keep that on your hook. Two. Three. Spread this out. Again, you're going to need anchor bands to secure this. Push your hook through that first one. Slide through and create your first anchor band. And then you're going to go 3 o'clock, 6 o'clock and 9 o'clock for your other three. One. You might only need three anchor bands. That works too. Let's grab our little nose. We're going to go here and go through. Again, you're going to have to approximate where you want this. So there's our first band in. I'll try and keep it on my hook. There we go. Let's see where we want our second band to be. Might be a bit too close. Our third band. I think that's okay. So now, because these are so close together, I'm just going to tie those like that and I'm going to come up quite far, quite high, so that there's some tension there. Because if I do it too loose, um, the nose will come out and I really don't want that. So I've gone quite high 
to do my tie off so there's the googly eyes and you can see even the eyes maybe I should have gone a little higher to make those a little bit more taut okay but there we have our little face we're going to do the antenna I'm using navy for those these are the jelly bands actually what I did I took three and wrap them around my hook once and twice and slid onto two but before I reclaimed the other side of my bands pretty them up a bit take two just like when we do feet on figures wrap once and twice and slide on and then I slid onto two and so that was sort of for the bulbous bit at the top and then what I did was I took a single band and figure eight looped it on itself so it's a capped band and we did one and again two three four and five So there's five. Now, to attach these, you sort of want them to go, I position them above each of the eyes, like this, and I used red to tie them off with, okay? So you're going to slip one side out, like that, okay? So you've got one side out, And if you need to use your stitch marker to hold it, that's fine. I have one side out. You're going to capture a couple of red bands. Pop that side back. All right, like that. Take a red band. And you're going to slide through. And then tie off in a slip knot. Like so. To tie it off, what I did, I tied it off at the front. But then as I came back through the back here, what I did was I came through the back, went through, and then I pulled this forward. And it sort of made this antenna stick up a little bit. So that's how I did that. Let's do the other one. So we start with three. Wrap around your hook once and twice. Slide onto two. Pretty them up. Before you reclaim, take another two. Wrap once and twice. Now reclaim. Slide onto two. And this is where we do our five little capped bands. One. two, three, four, and five. Again, remember we're not going to, we, we need to um, keep one side free. I'm just going to get rid of these so I've got some room. So again, you're going to approximate where this is. I'm going to put it about here. I'm going to take one side off. All right. I'm going to find where I want to put this, which for me, I'm going to put it here. Put these two little loops, these two little blue loops back on. Make sure I get both of them like that. My red band, again, I'm going to tie off from the front. Okay, tie off at the front, make my slip knot, come round to the back here, push my hook through. I'm going to go through the red bands here, push my hook through the centre here of that bottom blue, grab the tie off band and pull it back through the centre of that blue till it comes out the other side and pull forward. And then again, it sits 
upright. So now we're going to do our next round of decrease and stuff and then we can attach to the body. So push your hook back through and all we need now is some red and this time we're going to do a single crochet which we did on here followed by a decrease. So here's our decrease. Oops, I'm pulling it so far I nearly lost it. Let's move our stitch marker onto that stitch now. Single crochet. Oh, I could have left it on the other one. Good night, that was a single crochet. Never mind, doesn't matter. Followed by a decrease. Single crochet. Let's try not to unravel everything, Kate. <laughs> A decrease. Single crochet. Decrease. Single crochet. decrease, single crochet, and decrease. Okay, so really this is our first stitch because I moved it forward by one. So I'm going to do, actually I'm not, I'm going to count. So remember, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, and number 12 is on our hook, okay? Now what we're going to do is we can take this out, pop your stitch marker on your last stitch here, just secure it on the edge. We're going to stuff this, okay? So grab some stuffing. How many of you have forgotten to stuff things before? <laughs> it's annoying, isn't it? Might be a bit much. You don't want to stuff it too much because otherwise your stitches will move apart and you'll see all the stuffing through it and that can look really manky. So that, I think, is good for my stuffing situation. Let's close our little friend off here. And all you're going to be doing is decreases. So you can take this stitch marker out, okay? And we're going to go through, just do some decreases. Busy losing stitches here.
and tie off like so all right so that took about nine bands to do the um, the decreasing now what we have to do is now this is the end where we tied off here okay what we can do is join these two together and it's going to be you're going to be a little tricky here because you've got this tie off band here I have been going through the center like that grabbing one side of my band pulling it through like this so that I've ended up with two sides like that which makes it sort of smaller and then I've attached one side either side of my tie off here like this and pulled the red through just so that they're all linked like that so this this is our little head here what I'm going to do I'm going to splay this out this tie off band and I'm going to stretch it over our head like that just so that that's secure and is not going to go anywhere and now what I'm going to do is actually sew these edges into each other What I would suggest is go through a couple of these spots and drag through a single red band between the red and the green. So put your hook through. Do a loose little slip knot. Now, if you have stitch markers that you can add this to, it's probably a good idea. If you don't, it doesn't really matter. Again, go through, grab a couple of bands, single, You can put S clips on these, C clips, just to hold them. I'm using stitch markers just to hold these in spot. And do one last one here if I can get it without getting too much stuffing with me <laughs> come on okay there we go one through here now what I'm going to do I'm going to do my slip knot and then I'm going to capture the slip knot from the one in front of me so there's my other slip knot. I'm going to capture that and then I'm going to capture this one. I'll remove that stitch marker. I'll capture that one. I'm going to go to the next one, which is here. Take it off my sti stitch marker if I can. I can take the stitch marker out completely and just hold that other one. Drag it through through, drag it through, 
through. So I'm working my way around his neck. Okay, I'm back to the beginning here. I'll take a single red band, pull through and tie off in a slip knot. And I'm going to attach or hide that in the back here. Do one more slip knot just to be sure. Attach it to that one. Slip knot, and then I'm going to hide that in here, like so. And it's not the tidiest of stitching. You can do these smaller so they're not being stretched across such a wide area, but you get the gist. There we have. Our caterpillar you can uh, as I said do the different eyes you can have them with band eyes or with googly eyes you can make this as long as you want I made this one a little bit longer but you could make it so that it was this long and I think that would be you know really quite cute as well because you could actually capture him like this so that would be really sweet completely up to you how you do it um, I hope you have fun making him. Take care.